Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar about emotional or emotion control, a vital trade in quality or trade. So I'm letting a few last people connect. Uh, while we do that, can you please confirm in the question section whether you can properly hear me and see the presentation? Okay, fantastic. Thank you for the confirmation. Uh, so, one moment. Let me just rearrange some things around here. Okay, great. So, while a few lost people are connecting to this webinar, let me just quickly go through the uh, disclaimer as per standard. Contents of this material are provided by third party, not HOT or XNR for informational purposes only and do not constitute investment advice. HOT Forex and Blue Sky Forex assume no responsibility for any potential errors, inaccuracies or omissions in this material. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as containing an investment advice or an investment recommendation or a solicitation for the purpose of purchase or sale of any financial instrument. Any views or opinions presented within this material are solely those of the author and do not necessarily represent those of Hot Forex unless otherwise specifically stated. Currency trading may not be suitable for all investors as it carries a high degree of risk to your capital. Trading such products is risky and you may lose all of your investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Poor fill rates, expiry times, market volatility, and platform errors could result in losing trades. Before deciding to invest in currencies, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. You should be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange and currency trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if necessary. So with this out of the way, let's just quickly take a look at our agenda uh, today, I will briefly introduce myself. We'll talk about the two market types that you will encounter during your daily trading activities as per standard. We will tap into the brain chemistry while you are trading and how it functions. Um, we'll talk about recommended risk management, emotion control, and of course, currency trading dangers and Q&A in the end. Now, um, please note that we are discussing some really biochemical things in the webinar today. I'm not a biochemist myself. I haven't done any of these tests. This data is based on the tests um, that are done by scientists and professors in, uh, in familiar uh, universities. Okay. So, uh, I am one of the senior traders in Blue Sky Forex, which is a part of Blue Sky Technologies. We are an education, research, and trading group. And we do teach various different strategies that we have um, uh, developed and researched over time. We also provide 24-hour trade support and analysis just to help and allow the FX traders to trade safer. Blue Sky Forex is presenting this webinar on behalf of Hot Forex in order to educate you and help you become highly profitable currency traders. So let's take a look at two market types that you will encounter during your daily trading. First market type is price action, aka a trending market is definitely more powerful because um, when the trend is forming, you will see a very significant price movement and these significant price movements in order to benefit from them they will need to be fueled by significant news okay so if you have identified that there has been some significant economic news that has hit the market um, the price is heavily trending then obviously you will be able to trade with the trend uh, you have definitely heard the expression trend is your friend, which is essentially true. Um, you can definitely reap a lot of profits when trading with the trend at the right time. Obviously, this requires a lot of experience. Um, trending market is a bit more difficult to identify. 
because identifying and confirming that uh, some significant news is moving the price significantly is a bit harder than identifying a mean reversion, aka a ranging market, which uh, definitely is more common. It is easier to identify. It can be profitable. A mean reversion market is essentially when the price is bouncing between the nearest support and resistance levels. Okay, so S1 and R1 are the nearest ones. If you have attended one of our support resistance levels uh, webinar, you'll definitely understand what I'm talking about. Highly recommend that. Uh, support resistance levels is one of my uh, most favorite uh, tool to trade no matter what technique I'm using no matter the strategy support and resistance levels is something I'm always incorporating into my trading activities okay it's really important to uh, know where these levels are all right now no matter the market type you're trading in you will still need to have a good control over your emotions and you will need to have a proper money management system and risk management just system in place. Um, just to get the trade direction right, it's only a small part of the actual, so to say, success equation of trading. Um, everything else is about managing your money and managing yourself and the emotions. Okay. If you start trading, if you have been in this industry for for a few months, even a few weeks, then you will easily realize this, that uh, sometimes it's really difficult to control yourself. You want to keep on trading after you have won some trades or have lost some trades. You want to either earn more or earn back the losses that you have generated on your account. Okay, and it's really difficult to just stop, switch off your trading platform, and do something else and just walk away to trade another day okay i know it uh, firsthand most of the traders who are still trading know it firsthand because they have been there um, it does take time to develop a proper emotion control uh, it takes a lot of practice as everything uh, when it comes to trading so you just have to be patient you just have to analyze the mistakes you make and adjust accordingly okay so this is the 14 stage emotional cycle i will you know briefly go through it there's really no point of in detail discussing every little point you see on this chart here but essentially what you can see if you can see my mouse cursor we're starting from the left okay um this scenario i will explain a bit um, uh, what trading scenario this is really representing. So let's say you are really optimistic about a trade opportunity. You enter the trade. Um, the trade turns out really well in the beginning, but perhaps you have read online that, you know, holding on good investments um, in order to reap higher profits is recommended. Um, you hold on to the investment but something happens on the market and the price reverses. Either some news hit the market that made the price reverse. So first of all, of course, you will ex you will feel excitement, the thrill of trading. Um, at one point, you will feel a euphoria because the trade is going really well. Uh, it's really uh, well in profit. Now, this is the point of maximum financial risk. Okay, because euphoria is an emotion that affects the person uh, so significantly that the person might completely stop thinking rationally. Okay, at that point, maybe the user uh, or the trader initiates a new trade, you know, believing that um, the price will still go in the same direction, just wanting to, um, you know, double up the profits even more, just entering the trade with um, a higher trade size in the same direction on the same asset. You know, we all know that it's a bit silly to do this, right? So that trader is not really thinking clearly anymore. Now, something happens to the market, the price reverses. It doesn't matter whether the trader initiated another trade or not. Uh, still, the profits that that trade has earned this far 
are starting to erode. Um, the trader gets feels anxiety, you know, still hoping that the price will continue going in the same direction. If the price does not, they will feel denial. They, you know, deny the fact that the price is reversing. At one point, they will feel fear um, that, you know, it's actually true and the price is reversing and, you know, all the profits are gone. Um, when the price already goes in the other direction uh, completely, you know, some losses start accumulating. You, you see depression, panic, one point capitulation. You feel like completely giving up on trading. Then there's dependency and, uh, and depression. And of course, at that point, there's max maximum financial opportunity. Okay. So at this point in emotional depression and stress, of course, I mean, it's, it's a two way street. Uh, at one point you might really start analyzing uh, what you've done wrong, uh, get a hold of yourself and actually make the right decision. Okay. So uh, profiting from the new opportunity that is arising. So if that chance is taken, of course, you will still have, again, have hope, will have relief that you will be able to still recover from the situation. Then the cycle starts again. Okay. So this is the emotional cycle of trading. And then in the scenario that I brought out uh, for you, this is uh, definitely applicable. Now, Going to dive deep, a bit deeper into the uh, brain uh, structure, um, on the very top side, the biggest part is the neocortex where all your thoughts, uh, meanings, logic, uh, associations, and of course, feelings about feelings uh, are processed okay, in the large part of your brain at the top side. Then you have the middle brain, which is the limbic system. This is a bit more, um, these kind of simple emotions like uh, joy, happiness. Um, then you have the brainstem, which is the lower part of the brain, which controls this kind of, it's called the reptile brain, because this is something, it is so, um, essential and and um, animalistic so to say okay and these uh, this part of the brain controls your basic reactions like fight or flight you know this is what it's called essentially when you encounter the danger there are two options whether you escape whether you run away or you actually do something about it and fight back in order to eliminate the danger. This kind of basic human animalistic behavior is controlled by this brain stem. And of course, autonomic functions like, like breathing, um, you know, control of your organs, etc., and of course, appetite. Now, this is not a biology lesson by any means, but understanding the very basic structure of the brain uh, is somewhat useful to understanding how your emotion control works as well okay now the chemistry of winning yes as you can see on the left side the roi depends on your confidence uh, level there is a really really uh, fine line between uh, being relatively confident about your trading activities or being too unconfident or too confident okay being uh, you know unconfident or being too confident are both um so to say unprofitable okay are really not uh, really not useful to um, profit from your trading activities when you are trading and you experience a lot of wins in a row, 
then your brain is flooded with adrenaline and dopamine. Okay. This essentially gives you an emotional high. You feel powerful, you feel invincible, and, and you think you can, and you think you have won the market. Okay. Now, this heightens your self confidence significantly to the very border of um, being too self confident. Being too confident can render you make stupid mistakes. Okay. You stop analyzing the market appropriately. You think that, you know, at, because you have won so many trades in a row and you are invincible and uh, you might think that you always are making the right decisions. You stop analyzing the market enough in order to make adequate choices. Okay. So you will be making reckless decisions. Um, and thus the, the being averagely confident, if you can, if you can say it like that is the most optimal uh, thing. Now, obviously we can't always control that because it relies on our emotions and controlling our emotions is difficult. But just uh, to keep in mind that if you feel that you are a bit overconfident or if you are a bit too confident, if you're thinking that you have beat the market and are really great at trading, you're professional and you can, you can make a lot of profits, and then think again, just slow down, stop for a moment, Analyze what you're doing. Analyze if your way of thought at that moment is actually right. And then remembering this chart you see on the left side and think about whether you are overconfident or not. Okay. Now, the other side of this chart, um, it happens when you are, when you lose confidence. Um, if you are dealing with series of losses um, well, let, let's actually um, smoothly pass over from the winning scenario into losing scenario first okay so if you're winning too much you might eventually start over trading wanting to earn more okay now in the search of more wins and profit you expose yourself to increased risk. Thus, you most likely will be triggering some losses, which will uh, trigger different kind of chemical reactions in your brain. And this eventually leads to amygdala hijack. Okay. So now the chemistry of losses, when this happens and you start losing and losing, have several losses in a row your brain is flooded instead of adrenaline and dopamine it's flooded with cortisol this is a hormone in, in uh, that is released in, into the brain this also reduces your ability to think think rationally and your very basic emotions kick in okay so whatever practices uh, you are carrying out previously will simply fly out of the window. You're not really thinking straight. Okay. So risk management, money management, very often you just forget about this. Your amygdala is controlling your brain and your responses to trading and uh, controlling the decisions that you are making. Emotions like greed, anger, these take over, okay? Because you are not really accepting the losses. You want to earn back uh, what you have lost this far. So you, again, you start revenge trading. You're trying to revenge the market for causing these losses to your capital. Makes sense? So, um, then of course you are uh, you're losing confidence about your trading. You're making stupid mistakes, and this can also uh, cause significant damage to your account. Now, when all this happens, when you're winning for at first and then you're losing, 
um, your brain is essentially a chemical mess. You have so much chemical substances released into your brain that you are unable to think rationally. Okay. To prevent this from happening, of course, as I have mentioned a lot and really stressed the importance of it in the previous webinars is setting very strict rules to your trading. This means money management rules and of course, the risk management rules. Okay. So following these rules, um, you need to be really strict. You cannot break the rules. Otherwise, there is really no point. It takes time to practice not to break these rules. Now, these are the, you have definitely heard the expression that rules are there for breaking. Okay. But not in this case. And these are rules that are not meant to be broken. Sorry, not meant to be broken. Okay. So don't break the rules. Stick to them and be really, really strict, okay? I will uh, talk about uh, risk-reward ratio or reward-risk ratio uh, in a bit as well. So re recommendations for the emotion control, obviously money management, you know, develop a money management plan, uh, set the rules, stick to them. Milestone-based business plan, now what, that means is setting goals, setting uh, targets, uh, short term and longer term. Okay, essentially having a trading plan. This is also really, really important because this allows you to more adequately analyze how you have been performing this far, um, how close you are to the targets, whether you should push a bit more, uh, whether you should uh, concentrate more on making less trades, but more uh, thoroughly analyzed trades, in example. And of course, longer term plan uh, allows you to uh, reconfigure your uh, trading habits. What sessions you're trading in, how many trades uh, you're performing per day, all these kind of things. Now, having this kind of milestone based plan uh, is really, really important. Okay. Another thing to remove emotions um, from the game, so to say, is virtual trading. Now, this statement, of course, is really controversial to some because a lot of professionals say that if you um, enjoy trading virtual money or if you get used to trading virtual money, too much, you will completely um, alien yourself to the emotions that the real money trading is involving. Okay, so you're not really feeling um, the thrill, the adrenaline, the fear of trading uh, real money. Thus, you are unable to adequately analyze the value of money when you are trading. So you know, coming from really extensive virtual money trading and jumping into live trading is a bit more difficult than, you know, immediately starting to trade with live money because you will immediately start experiencing these emotions that real live money trading brings, okay, if that makes sense. However, the reason why virtual money trading is in this list of recommendations is that in order to practice a certain strategy or, or test out any change that you have made to your trading habits, a virtual money account or trading is essential. Okay. You, if you have, if you have changed something or if you're practicing a new strategy, then immediately doing so with a real live uh, money account is, is dangerous. Because if the strategy actually doesn't work or if the change you made is not good, then you're exposing yourself to risk to losing out on some of your account capital. And we don't want that. It's better to test it out on a um, virtual account. If it works fine on a virtual account, 
then only move it slowly over to the live account. Okay, please keep that in mind. Testing out new things on a virtual account is completely okay. The, sec uh, the next recommendation is community reporting. And what I mean by this is uh, joining a trading community, uh, openly talking about your trading activities, what trades you have initiated, you know, creating your own live trading reports and broadcasting it to the community for them to, you know, look into this. They can give you suggestions. If you have lost um, some money during your trading session, you know, people can tap in and, and uh, give you some advice, um, you know, why this might have been, why this might have happened. Maybe there was some news that hit the market that you overlooked. You know, the community can pinpoint these things out and help you evolve, okay? They can help you find your own mistakes. So reporting your trading sessions to the community um, can actually be really beneficial and can help you uh, evolve uh, faster and becoming a good trader a lot faster than just sticking to uh, trading alone. Trading alone is always, always a bad idea because there is no second pair of eyes to help you analyze uh, what you're doing in the industry, okay? So definitely highly recommend uh, this reporting. Uh, sorry for the background noise that we have crazy street racers sometimes on the streets got to love them right okay so uh, next thing money management uh, I talked about this before uh, most likely we have this topic in every webinar because it is important okay now something that I really want to stress uh, always is before entering the trade, always make sure you define your take profit and stop losses immediately and stop fiddling around with those levels after you have entered the trade. Extremely important. Okay. So when I was starting to trade several uh, years ago, what I used to do is I entered the trade. I saw that the price was moving against my predicted direction, right? Um, as I have set my stop loss a bit too tight, I thought at that time, then I moved the stop loss a bit further to the way uh, from the actual price to give it a bit more play room, okay? But more often than not, I ended up increasing my losses because the price never, never reversed. It never went to my desired or predicted direction. So a lot of these cases, I ended up losing more money than I would have initially if I did not fiddle around with the stop loss levels. Same thing is with the take profit levels. Now, of course, it is said that letting your profits run is beneficial. Um, this is somewhat true, especially if you're trading um, and longer term trades like um, more than one day if you're reaping for the if you're aiming for these 150 200 300 400 pip gains maybe more then you would need to look at the larger picture okay you need to know and understand what's happening in the economy what's happening on the market um, to realize whether there is um, whether the price potentially continues in the same direction a longer term. Then of course, you can uh, increase the take profit. But in this case, if you already are aiming for these larger gains longer term, then it's better to use a trailing stop, okay? Because the trailing stop in this case is simply moving along with the new um, higher highs or lower lows if you're in profit, okay? So using trading stop is, is better in this case than manually fiddling around with the uh, take profit level, all right? 
if you're trading shorter term, then I don't recommend or I wouldn't mess around with the take profit level myself at all. Same as with the stop loss level. About the reward risk ratio, it's best to start off with a one to one risk reward ratio, which means that your take profit level is exactly the same distance uh, from your entry price as the stop loss level. It's better to increase the reward risk ratio over time to perhaps two to one or even uh, three to one if you are really confident if about your trading style and strategy and if you know you can achieve it. Uh, this means that your take profit level is two times the distance of your stop loss. Okay. So uh, increasing your risk reward or reward risk ratio eventually uh, is recommended. Uh, never risk more than 1% of your account equity on a single trade. If one trade is causing 5% of your total account equity loss, then uh, stop trading. Or if you have lost already 5% of your account capital during a single trading session, then this should be the point of you walking away just to live to fight another day. Okay. So 5% total account equity loss per day. Keep that in mind. And no single trade should uh, exceed uh, or be able to can generate more than 5% loss of your total account equity. Okay. It's better to keep it at 1%. For more experienced traders, you can use the Kelly risk management formula that uses historical success rate, profit factor per trade uh, to determine a percentage risk level. Now, in some cases, the output of this formula is higher than 5%. In this scenario, it's um, recommended or preferred that the maximum of 5% uh, should be set, okay? So the milestone based business plan, this is something that I already uh, talked about uh, before. Uh, something to uh, add here is don't generate um, too, um, how to say, too aggressive or, or too enthusiastic uh, business plan uh, saying that you know, I will earn $1 million in a year, for example, most likely it's not going to happen. Okay. Unless you are extremely good. If you're starting out, then obviously you're not extremely good and making 1 million in one year, it's a good dream, you know, a fine goal, but it doesn't make sense. Okay. So setting unrealistic goals, is a waste of time. All right. So definitely keep that in mind. Set realistic goals to yourself. If you achieve those goals, make sure they are achievable in first hand. Um, if you achieve those goals, you know, you'll feel good about yourself. You, you know that you have uh, achieved something. In the very first milestone is you've gotten to that milestone. It gives you extra boost to um, to achieve the next milestone okay so you have to keep it at that level in order to for these milestones to be achievable and just briefly about virtual money trading uh, which i um, already uh, explained um, only do this if you are trying out a new strategy or if you have uh, made some changes to your uh, trading style or trading methodology or just your strategy. And if you're trying out new things, then use a virtual account, not a live account, okay? Uh, again, I uh, already talked about this community reporting, definitely very beneficial, highly recommend there are a lot of these uh, trading communities out there. Sorry, I cannot really recommend uh, any of them on this webinar. Uh, it's up to you to do the research. 
and uh, definitely do a background check to make sure that the trading community is legit that they are not really um openly marketing uh, anything like this that you know follow our signals get rich quick you know anything similar because this is already a red flag and and most likely their real purpose uh, or their aim is to you know slowly or eventually um lower your account uh, balance okay um about community reporting as well um if you don't really want to engage in any um, communities online necessarily then it's recommended to talk to your close relatives or, or family members about your trading activities okay because in this scenario they somewhat can prevent you from making silly mistakes okay to prevent you from over trading prevent you from revenge trading if they know about your trading activities then they can pull you out on uh, before it's too late if you know what i mean okay so let's say in a few trading sessions you you started out with ten thousand dollars and in a few trading sessions you lose lose five thousand dollars and if you communicate this to your close family members uh, they might pull you out of the um, so to say negative mindset that you really want to earn this back they can pull you out um, you will be able to take a bit of time off um, review what you have done wrong and then uh, with a clear mind then jump back in again and make the right decisions okay so yeah it's it's definitely something to consider if you don't want to um disclose your trading activities to any uh, third party uh, people uh, that you don't know online the last thing to discuss today is the currency training trading dangers this is something we also talk about uh, most likely on every, every webinar First of all, do not trust bots or robots. Many of them are designed to generate losses on your trading account. Um, they are most of them. They are badly designed. They don't work. And and if they do, they usually work very for very short term, and longer term they still empty your account. Okay. These kind of uh, bots, robots, or expert advisors, they are dangerous. Very few work on longer term basis, but these don't make you a millionaire over um, one month or a couple of months. These usually, some months they earn a bit of uh, losses to your account, um, but the rest, um, they earn a bit of profit and eventually you, after a few years, you still end up uh, being in a bit of profit, okay? So before engaging in any of the, um, these robots or trading bots, do a significant background check, okay? And use a demo account at first. If the robot has performed well over a, a half a year period, earning profit on a demo account, then you can only jump in with a live account and see if it works. Um, you know, be really careful. Use pretty low lot sizes to uh, test out a robot on live account. Okay. Now, sad but true, only 5% of the old traders in FX or the retail traders in FX make money in longer term. Um, this is mainly because of today's topic that we discussed today, emotion control. A lot of people are really enthusiastic um, about the opportunity that they can make money home you know, working from home, doing this from home. And, you know, it's easy. Essentially, you just look at the chart, you push a couple of buttons and then you can earn money, right? We all know it's not so simple, but most of the new traders just jump in, you know, having that in mind, that's really easy. They can become millionaires soon. And unfortunately, there is a lot of marketing and a lot of advertisement saying just that, that you can, it's really easy and they can really 
will quickly become really rich. Now, this is false advertising. It's not really the case. And, and the trading is dangerous and it, it does, it's risky, not dangerous, sorry. It does require a lot of commitment, a lot of learning and a lot of self-control. Why most people lose money is they, they cannot control their emotions. They are too enthusiastic when trading. They are failing to learn from their mistakes. And after losing a bit of money, they will either withdraw the money or if they have emptied one of their accounts, they simply say that, you know, trading is a scam. I got scammed. I'll never do this again. And uh, that's it. That's, that's the, end, the end of the story. And this is why the percentage is so high. The ones that are willing to learn, uh, all of you here, you are willing to learn that that's the reason you're attending the, these webinars. Um, you're actually wanting to improve. You are wanting to become successful longer term. And this is the right attitude. And, and I truly hope that uh, by the end of the day, you are part of the 5% that actually is able to make money longer term. Okay. With this in mind, uh, you should also know that emptying one or two accounts is not really a bad thing. It's part of the learning process. Uh, trust me on that one. Most, if not all, professional traders have been there. Have they have emptied, you know, one or two accounts? Some of them have lost maybe ten thousand dollars. Some have lost a hundred thousand dollars. But, I, but they see, um, they're really passionate about trading. They want to improve, they want to learn. Thus, they, they, they study it, they uh, focused on it. They spend time learning and studying the markets. That is the reason why they are now professionals, okay? That is the reason they are now able to live off uh, trading. They're successful because they spent time and they didn't give up, okay? If you empty one or two accounts, uh, that means you need to change something. Not necessarily change your strategy completely, because then it's like you know starting completely all over again, and then you might end up uh, emptying another account. Okay, so change something. See if that works out. If it doesn't, then uh, you know make some additional changes to your trading strategy and trading plan, emotion control, money management, etc. If you enter your account, change something. You don't have to give up immediately and be in one of those 95% of traders who have lost money. Okay. And last but not least, 5% of the signal services and signal rooms are legitimate. It's, it's the same thing as with bots. A lot of them are just designed to um, generate losses in your, in your account. Before engaging with one of these, definitely use a demo account if possible. Uh, do a proper background check, ask for an audit trail, see the validity of their um, trading performance, their signal performance. Uh, see if uh, there are a lot of complaints on the web about that signal or a service provider before even thinking about using a live account and then trading those signals on it, okay? Really important. Um, if you're not sure what to do, then it's best to stick away, or sorry, uh, stay away and stick to your own trading strategy and just evolve your own uh, trading habits, make your own mistakes, uh, better it, it's better to learn from others' mistakes, of course, but making your own mistakes um, makes you learn a bit faster. And, and, and this kind of lessons that you have experienced yourself will have a better or a more significant effect. And you will remember these uh, mistakes better and uh, definitely will prevent you from uh, doing those in the future. Okay? So uh, this is it for today's uh, topic. It is time for questions. Uh, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I will do my best to answer these.
Herbert is asking what robot I can trust. Now, sorry, um, there is really no recommendations that I can uh, give on this webinar. You would need to do your own research. Uh, sorry for being so blunt, but uh, this, this is how it is. I can't really provide any of these kind of recommendations. Um, as I mentioned, ask for an audit trail, do a background check, see if there are any complaints about a certain robot or a certain signal or service provider before um, you know engaging in, in any of these. Okay, Alan is asking a really great question. If one has uh, an old control behavior that is now a habit, how does that affect the brain and which part is affected? As markets cannot be controlled, how does one address this issue to avoid making the wrong decisions when trading? Any suggestions? This is a really brilliant question. Um, and um, I'm sorry, I'm not really a biochemist. I can't say uh, what part of the brain is affected and that controls old, con old behaviors. Um, however, uh, yes, the markets, the, we, we retail traders, we can control the markets, right? We cannot even make the markets move the slightest. The, the market is controlled by the big, fish, so to say, the big players. But uh, to avoid making the wrong decisions, um, if you already have an old habit uh, that you are having difficulties getting uh, rid of, then what I would do in your position, um, I would document each and everything about my trading habits, uh, the trading sessions, my risk and money management uh, money, money management habits on a piece of paper and uh, then analyze what changing what part will affect uh, your old habit. If your old habit was initiating too many trades uh, for a trading session, then obviously you, you realize that limiting yourself to maximum five trades per trading session uh, would help getting rid of that habit, right? Or setting yourself a target of earning 100 pips per trading session and losing 50 pips per trading session. As soon as you reach either of these targets, you will simply stop and walk away. Now, some brokers or some platforms provide an automated uh, risk management features that lock you out of the trading platform when you reach any of these targets. Uh, it's not always the case, however, and, and you will need to do this manually. Okay. Uh, I hope this answered your question or, or helped you uh, somewhat. Uh, depending on your habit, you know, obviously you need to perform different changes on your trading strategy. And, and the old support uh, and resistance webinar is definitely available in the past webinar section on the hot uh, Forex uh, page after you're signed in. Herbert is asking if you have a German speaking uh, webinars. I do apologize to my knowledge, all the webinars, they are in English language. Sorry. Ariel is um, asking a good question as well. Uh, first of all, Ariel, thanks for the good words. Um, now, Ariel's question is, should I stick to one strategy and become good at it first before moving on to another strategy? Or is it good to try 
a few at the same time. For example, trading trend lines while studying support resistance and learning to use moving averages. I would say, um, based on the examples that you provide, support resistance, moving averages, and using trend lines, these are really common. These, to me at least, they are relatively easily understandable. And I see absolutely no problem in you looking into all of these um, tools or trades, okay? However, please try to refrain from um, studying or practicing too many different things at once because you will overwhelm yourself. Eventually, you will not be able to... You, it's not really good to be the jack of all trades when you're trading, okay? It's better to become a professional with certain tools that you are studying and you're practicing and then use these tools to your benefit because obviously you're not really going to add 10 different uh, technical indicators on your price chart when you analyze it because you will clutter your workspace. You will make it absolutely impossible to analyze what the price is doing, okay? So try to keep it simple, especially at first, Analyzing these three uh, trading tools is completely fine, in, in my opinion. And, and the mastering all those three um, is really good because you have chosen uh, three really powerful tools and, and uh, a really good job on that. Okay, I have one other question here. So blowing your account is not abnormal. Is there a strategy you can suggest to help in trading? And yes, this webinar is recorded. Uh, blowing one account is completely uh, normal. Uh, most of us have been there and done that. Okay, so if you blow an account, you will immediately understand that you will need to change something. You will need to improve, you need to focus, you would need to revise and analyze exactly what you have done this far, okay? Um, on this webinar, we're not going to really talk about any strategies I can suggest. However, we do have a strat uh, webinar about advanced trading strategies where we do discuss a few strategies that we use here in Blue Sky Forex. Okay, Clinton is asking, is there anything like market maker method strategy? Does, ex does it exist? I presume you are talking about if the market makers are having any strategies that they use in order to uh, profit from their trading activities, right? If that's the question, then uh, sure, all the market makers have their own unique trading um, strategy or method that they are practicing uh, in order to uh, first move the markets and also profit from their trading activities. They are in a lot of cases, using really sophisticated um, AIs that are learning the market as they go, as they analyze it all automatically and initiate the trades automatically. So these really sophisticated robots are essentially uh, massive computer programs that uh, are performing this kind of processing activity to analyze all this, evolve themselves, etc. cetera. Uh, we retail tater, traders obviously don't have access to those. So we need to rely on our own ability to learn and focus and design our own uh, trading strategies.
Okay, Diamond is asking also a really, really good question. Uh, must a trader trade every weekday? Of course not. Uh, however, you should develop a trading schedule for yourself. Uh, but this is this doesn't have to be a weekly schedule that you set certain days that you trade. It can also be, of course, you can obviously set um, certain days that you trade per week. There's nothing wrong about that. Um, you can also design a trading schedule uh, per session. Essentially, you're marking down what hours a day you're trading at. Okay, so let's say that you have um, usually traded during the uh, London session where the most of the volume is happening. Then you should stick to trading during the London session. You should become accustomed to those market conditions during that trading session and practice it and uh, become friends, so to say, with that trading session. Okay. Now, scheduling your trading, um, this should happen um, at the same time of day. So in the same trading session, um, you don't have to trade every day. Uh, you can skip a few days. There's no problem with that. That is completely up to you. I would even do that, in fact, uh, just to uh, take a day or two off during the week, especially if uh, the market conditions haven't really been in my favor. So, uh, so yeah, you can skip a few days here and there. There's nothing wrong about that. But if you are trading, then try to stick to your infra day, sorry, infra day trading schedule, which is trading during the same uh, trading hours that you're used to. Um, just one note, we are soon hitting the one hour mark, so a last call for any questions. Okay, Clinton is asking, can different time sessions like Asian, uh, London and New York session affect our emotions? Yes, they can, essentially, because the thing is, um, if you live in London, in example, and if you want to trade during the Asian, Asian session, then essentially you need to trade in the nighttime, right? Now, trading in the nighttime, obviously, will uh, carry perhaps, if not completely different emotions, but uh, emotions with a different... Um, degree because obviously you're tired if you lose a trade you might get a bit more upset than uh, if you are trading during the London session when you are fresh and when you are awake properly okay so yes it can have a different effect on your emotions so selecting the optimal time for trading uh, is important it's there's really no point in forcing yourself uh, be awake for an extensive amount of time especially if you also have a, um, a standard daily job. Obviously, after your you know, daily job, you are definitely tired. Don't immediately jump into analyzing the market. Stay, take an hour or two, you know, have dinner, uh, relax. And if you are, if you have a bit, you know, if you are a bit rested, only then again, again in trading. Okay. Only then start analyzing the markets. You know, give it give it an hour or two or three maximum after your daily job uh, to prevent yourself from um, over trading or revenge trading or becoming too tired from the trading itself. Okay. okay last call for questions. Okay, great. It seems that there are no more questions coming in. Um, 
thank you all for attending this webinar today. It has been my pleasure hosting this uh, topic um, this week. Um, next week, we don't have a webinar. However, the week after that, uh, we will have a new topic for you. Uh, hope it will be uh, a great one. Hope it can deliver uh, value to your uh, to your trading knowledge. And um, we'll see you next time. Again, thank you and have a great day. Take care. Thanks all for the good words. Enjoy. <laughs>